Okay, Mike, now you've got a lot of your much bigger non-venomous snakes mm -hmm. out. So tell me some about these. Okay. Well, as we talked earlier, 39 of our 46 species in Oklahoma are non-venomous. Mm -hmm. uh, these are some of the, I guess, more intimidating non-venomous just because of their size. Yeah. Uh, the most common large upland snake in South Central Oklahoma is this black rat snake. Uh, the one I've got here is kind of black blotches on a yellow background, but they can be solid black. They'd be black on a little bit of a orange or reddish background as well. They're constrictors. They can go up a brick wall as easily as you and I walk on a sidewalk. Wow. Uh, they, they're, they're climbers. They, they eat right, mice, rats, birds, and bird eggs. This is what gives people a lot of problems in chicken coops and stuff like that, mm. eating their bird eggs and stuff. I have an adult here that's a little over five foot long. They get up to six and a half foot long. And then I have a hatchling or a juvenile right next to it that's a little pattern a little differently. Uh -huh. uh, we have a couple of species of rat snakes. I just have one here. Then uh, another group of snakes that people confuse with cotton mouse a lot are these water snakes, uh, the Nerodia genus. Yeah. Uh, I've got a, a plain-bellied water snake. Another name for this same snake is a blotched water snake. They tend to be stocky bodied, kind of earth tone colored, uh, live in the same habitat as cotton mouse, eat the same things. Uh, but if you, if you get a close up the head, it, it doesn't have the black streak down its side of its face like a cottonmouth does. Uh, there's another snake that's very similar to it called a diamondback water snake that's even stocky bodied and a little bit more triangular head. I have an adult here and I have a, a juvenile here in, in, the, in the other container. Mm -hmm. uh, all snakes have musk but glands back at the cloaca and the water snakes have some of the strongest musk. I mean, I often smell one out in the wild 20 yards before I see really? it. Well, I can kind of smell it now. Yeah. I, mean, I think back on like turkey hunts and yeah. things, I think I've yeah, smelled A lot of times you, you can smell that. Cause all snakes have musk glands, but the water snakes have some of the strongest musk glands. Uh -huh. And we had the, the a hognose snake out a little while ago. They have a real interesting behavior. They're some of the least harmless of our large snakes, but a lot of people are afraid of them because they have other common names like puff adder and hiss adder and that kind of stuff. It's unfortunate, it's not an adder. It has that upturned nose. We have an eastern hog nose, which we have here, and there's a western hog nose, but they go through a real elaborate behavior to scare you off. They flatten their neck like a cobra. Uh -huh. They uh, will uh, hiss. They'll, they'll, <laughs> they may even fake a strike, but they'll close their mouth and just bump you. Uh -huh. If that doesn't scare you away, they'll throw up the last meal and defecate and turn over and play dead and try to get rid of you. <laughs> so We can see another water snake in here. This is the uh, ribbon snake. And let me find my gloves here. I, I, I see them over here. Uh, I'm going to get out a, a juvenile king snake here. If there's one group of snakes that people ought to learn to really respect and like, and that's the king snakes. We have three species of king snakes in Oklahoma. We have the, I have a juvenile prairie king snake here. Uh, there's a, a speckled king snake, and there's a milk snake. Uh -huh. They're immune to pit viper venom, and they make a living hunting other snakes, particularly pit vipers. They'll swallow a pit wow. viper, a rattlesnake, or a cot per head just as long as they will. Of course, they'll eat any snake. You can't store them with other snakes because yeah. they'll eat them. But they'll eat lizards and stuff. But mostly, that I mean, if you don't like pit vipers, and most people don't want to have them around, they ought to love the king snakes because uh, wow. they eat other snakes, they eat rats and mice, and and that's really it. And and th that unfortunately, they're, they're pretty common in the pet trade too because they will demit this. A wild snake, a wild king snake, will definitely bite, uh -huh. like this one would if it gets a chance. But but in the Pet trade, they'll domesticate down when they're around people some, and they'll make decent pets. But I encourage people to leave them outdoors because they do eat other snakes, particularly pit vipers. Well, that would be a good tip or a suggestion that recommendation we'd make with any kind of snake. In I agree. Home. I agree. They all, they're all these that I've been showing you are wild animals. I collected them for these programs. They're all going back tomorrow where they came from. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I don't believe in keeping a wild animal in captivity. It just it's not good. But Anyway, the king snakes, if, you don't, if you're going to find one group of snakes to like, if you're afraid of snakes, it ought to be the king snakes. So. Well, he's beautiful, all yeah. right. You know, I really appreciate you uh, helping kind of dispel some of those myths about snakes, as well as give me some identification tips and just an overall greater appreciation for what we have. Thanks, well, thank Mike. Thank you, Todd. Enjoyed visiting with you all. You bet. Okay, Mike. Now we've got a whole bunch of samples of much smaller snakes and these really are like what most people would probably encounter when they're out and about. I gotta be honest, if I saw one of these, I would probably just mistakenly say, oh, it, that's just a grass snake. <laughs> a lot of people do. Yeah. Yeah, but there's no one species that's a grass snake. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just a small snake in the grass. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me, um, 
some about the characteristics of the more common snakes that people might encounter in Oklahoma. Okay. Well, we've got 11 of our 46 species in Oklahoma that never get over 14 inches fully grown. All six species we've got in front of us here are adults. They're not juveniles. Wow. And most of these small snakes are what we call fossorial. They live underground. Uh, they hunt things like earthworms or termites or ants or centipedes or something like that. And they, so a lot of times you'll find them under a board or a piece of tin or a rock where they come up when it's ground saturated to get away so they can breathe, get out of the moisture. Or they come up chasing their food, termites or earthworms or something like that. Usually when people are out in the yard or the garden, these are the kind of snakes they encounter. These are, uh, ver several of these species are very common here in the city limits of Ardmore. Uh, people don't even know they have them because they just haven't really looked for them. A lot of times they think they were looking at a worm or something like that. But, yeah. Uh, but the, we have this variable ground snake. And earlier you'd asked me about color on snakes. Yeah. Uh, the variable ground snake is a great one to talk about color. Now both specimens I've got here are gray background, but it's called variable because its color varies so much. Yeah. Uh, you can have reddish brown, you can have pink, you can have uh, red with black stripes or just red or black bands or whatever, and, and it's all the same species of snake. This one's color varies a great deal. It happens to be both ones I have are gray, but uh, this is an adult. Uh, that, this is one color is not a good indication. You kind of have to know the other characteristics, and I'd, I even have to use a magnifying glass or something to see these, because the variable ground snake has smooth scales. You'll hear, hear that term smooth versus keeled. And that mm -hmm. means the eat, a keeled scale, each scale has a ridge down the middle of it. And, and here's a, a snake with keeled scales. This is a rough, this is the most common snake in my yard at home here in Ardmore. And mm -hmm. every scale on this has a little ridge down the middle of it, so it's called keeled, or, and it gets its name rough earth snake because it has those keels. Mm -hmm. uh, all snakes, by the way, are dry skinned. They're not slimy like some people think they are. Right. But this is an adult uh, rough earth snake. And they make mostly earthworms. They're one of the few of the, some of these are pretty hard to keep in captivity, but the rough earth snakes will eat pretty well. This is a Texas brown snake. This is a, a little toward the small side of adult, but it is an adult. This was caught on the campus here at Noble Foundation about a week ago <laughs> by one of the employees. It's our most common small snake on this campus and several other places in town too. It's a brown snake with a little faint stripe down its back and black spots down both sides of that. It's beautiful. And it's got black spots on each side of the neck. Yes. That's a Texas brown snake. It also has keeled scales. And then... Uh, now that looks like a worm. And, and that <laughs> one of its common names, a uh, bad thing, snakes like a lot of organisms have multiple common names. You've heard of cougar, mountain lion, puma, all different names right, for the same critter. Right. Some people call this a worm snake correctly and some people call it a thread snake correctly. And it, it does look a lot like a worm. Both the head and the tail are rounded, so yeah. you have to really look close to see the eyes and the mouth. Uh, this yeah. snake eats primary termites and ant pupae. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, they're very common around here, but I hadn't seen one until just a couple of years ago. And then this year we caught 17 of them in a couple <laughs> hours. So you just get into concentrations of them. Right. Uh, that's an adult worm snake or thread snake. There's two species. This, this particular snake is a family different than all these others. We have three families of snakes. We have the viperidae with the pit vipers. Mm -hmm. And we have the thread snakes, which is two species in that family in Oklahoma. Then everything else in colubridae, the non-venomous snakes. So. Okay. Then we have a ring neck snake, and most people learn this one pretty easily because just like its name implies, it has a ring around its neck. Yeah. It, it, this one has an orange ring, but it can be red or yellow. It has a very colorful underbelly. It'll have yellows and reds on the underbelly. But usually the background is just gray on the top. Uh -huh. uh, this actually uh, is a rear fang snake. Uh, it, it, the, all these species I have in front of me, their mouths are too small to physically bite a person. Uh, and, and this snake actually does have a venom, but it's not a venom that's a danger to people. You know, a lot of people know that brown recluses and black widows have a venom danger to people, but all spiders have venom. Uh -huh. But only those two in Oklahoma, or, or widows in general and the recluses in general, are any threat to people. But all spiders have venom, and this snake has a venom, it's just not a venom that's a danger to us. Okay. Most of our non-venomous snakes don't have a venom. <laughs> this one does. This that is a real, that's yeah, but it's not a threat. It, it, it's not a threat to people. Yeah. It would be if you were a centipede or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking about the small species of centipedes, not the big ones we have. And this is our smallest species of snake in Oklahoma. And this is actually the largest individual of this species I've ever seen. It exceeds huh. normally maximum size is like this one. 
yeah. uh, seven or eight inches is normal the maximum size. This snake I'm holding my hand is almost eight inches long, or nine inches long maybe, eight to nine, which is the largest individual this species I've ever seen. It's oh. called a flat-headed snake. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway, it's, uh, it's got a dark head and then a brown body, and then it's got kind of a pinkish underbelly. That's maybe, great. That's Beautiful. Or flat-headed snake. There's also a black-headed snake that's very closely related to that. But anyway, like I said, we've got 11 over 46 species in Oklahoma that are under 14 inches maximum size. Their mouths are not large enough to bite. Of course, if you're going to let kids handle these, and I do let kids handle these because they don't bite them, but you need to make sure what you're handling. You know, you don't want to be sure. handling a baby copperhead or, or baby timber sure. rattler or something like that. But these species, if you're sure what, what it is, they're, they're absolutely no threat to people. They can't bite you. Mouth's too small.